Thank you. So, as a pediatrician, like uh, the last part of what Dr. Vinay taught, forgetting diabetes is very important for us because we all want our children to forget that. Uh, that is where actually automated uh, therapy helps. And the change which has occurred is the improvement in the device. Like with the loop getting closed, the loop, the outcome is going to change. Because initially, as pediatricians, we were very reluctant to put children on pump. I think Dr. Veda was also telling the same. Because the mother should be on the side. Then only she has to calculate the uh, borders, the correction, the sensitivity factor, everything. So for an adult it is okay, he himself does it. But for the mother it was a 24 hour job when you put someone on a first generation pump or something like that. So as the technology is improving, I think this is going to change, is going to make a paradigm shift in management of pediatric diabetes in our country. And the only thing is the cost which has to come down. So the new technology actually has uh, many components. Here the pump is actually connected to the sensor is always there which is the guardian sensor and also there is a glucometer which is connected with a Bluetooth and uh, uh, there is a a mobile app which is connected and also we have a internet connection to the CareLink technology so that we get information from the CareLink technology also to uh, change the parameters in the pump. And the new 780G is uh, suited for type 1 diabetes, actually it is licensed only for type 1 as such as of now. And it is not suited for uh, people who are using very small quantity of insulin. Like uh, there is a lower limit of 8 units and a higher limit of 250 units. The 8 units, the, the thing is actually the safety is not studied uh, uh, outside uh, these particular limits. And because I was asking about, because for our small kids, sometimes the total uh, use may be less than 8. So I think the technology should improve on that. And uh, uh, here, what you um, have to do here is, uh, it should know, it, it, because uh, we were telling about the indications of pump. Uh, Dr. Vena was um, um, listing out the indications or on which all people we can put the pump on. Now I think the list will uh, increase because, uh, because of the automat uh, automation, more people can take the pump. And uh, as in any case, the, for the initiation should be on the manual mode. Even though this is a uh, AE augmented pump, the initiation should happen with the uh, manual mode. And um, um, every patient should uh, uh, start with the manual mode because the machine has to learn uh, how the sugars are going up and down. And then only the uh, system get activated. So for at least for the first 48 hours it should be on the manual mode. So like in every patient we initiate on pump we have to teach them how to use the manual mode including the uh, wizard programs. And the smart card actually we have to teach them this is the symbol of the smart card. Only when this is active that indicates that your pump is going to work on the AA system. Otherwise, at, at times, you may have exited the system. That, that is a very important thing which you should uh, uh, tell the uh, patients. Because we believe that uh, the pump is doing everything and uh, we can be carefree. But at times, the pump can exit from the system. And at that time, this uh, uh, safety feature won't be visible. So there are some, I will tell you some instances when uh, there, uh, an exit happens. One is when there is a high sugar. When the sugar is high for a long time and the pump is delivering insulin at the max rate for uh, more than six or seven hours, then the pump will ask for a blood sugar. So at that time you have to do a manual blood sugar and enter it. If it doesn't happen, then the pump will exit. 
from the automatic system and it goes from to the manual system. Because at that time we need intervention. It is not like every time the computer is going to look after it. And like that, uh, there is a minimum uh, basal dose, which is actually something very near to zero. And if that happens for at least three hours, then uh, there, there again the alarm comes and uh, the pump exit from the system and shift to the manual mode. And here, uh, the goal, you can see that the goal is actually more than 80%. It is 85% is the goal. Um, so 85% is the goal means according to the new concept of time in range, we need to keep the all the values within uh, 70%. So this is a very apt system for maintaining that range. And uh, what we have to do, because there is a role of the uh, machine and role of the clinician. The clinician has to teach the patient to calculate the car ratio. So the only, there are very few things which we need to enter in the pump. One is the carb ratio. Whenever the um, patient is eating, we have to add the carb count. And then active insulin time, like uh, Dr. Mireya was telling, it is the uh, algorithm intervention time. It is not about, uh, like we say, the regular insulin acts for eight hours, the other one acts for six hours. It is not like that. It is, we are telling the mission how long the insulin should act. And uh, we have multiple choices like we keep uh, the, the recommended active insulin time to keep is actually two hours but it is always better to keep it a little uh, longer early and then bring it down to two hours like that it is kept. And auto basal targets again we have multiple uh, choices like 100, 110 or 120 and it is recommended for uh, children uh, below 15 years and old it is always better to keep a higher target initially and uh, then uh, bring it down. Like we can start from 120 and uh, then bring it down. And the algorithm will decide uh, uh, the, about the auto basal. Uh, it will decide what is the insulin sensitivity factor by uh, studying the child's profile over a period of time. And also it will be delivering auto corrections as explained. Right? So when we are doing the onboarding for any any pump, any pump, what we have to do is if you are uh, shifting a patient from the multiple daily dose regimen to a pump, we know that we have to reduce the total daily dose by 15 to 25 percent, and uh, half of it should be given uh, as the basal total basal insulin dose, and the basal insulin dose we can actually split into uh, maybe for day it is like this for the night it is like this. for a few hours it is like this uh, like that we can uh, keep the basal insulin dose and for bottles the same calculations we use the insulin carb ratio 450 by total daily dose insulin sensitivity factor 1800 by total daily dose and uh, we keep a blood sugar target to 100 to 120 uh, that i already told we can keep 100 110 or 120 and active insulin time always uh, start with maybe 2.5 or 3 and then bring it down slowly. So if the patient is already a pump user, there is uh, no need of doing all these calculations because you can keep the initial pump settings initially for the basal and for the bolus the same calculations can be used and they can be entered in the uh, VSAR. Then, uh, for the uh, smart guard, actually we can just keep the auto basal target and keep the auto corrections on. So after some time, it will uh, from the manual mode, it will automatically shift into the smart guard mode. And uh, what we have to focus is on, uh, um, we should uh, make sure that the uh, other parts of the pump, because outside the computer, that is the most important thing is the infusion set. Especially when we are uh, um, uh, putting a child on the pump, most of the time we have problems with the uh, thinking of the infusion set, not uh, changing the pump at the recommended time, all those things, some clogging of insulin. So that we have to kept on. And uh, we should tell about this um, uh, temporary target because children are known for uh, going for um, uncharted exercises, um, and uh, all those things, so that is needed. And uh, uh, you have to uh, tell the patient or you have to teach the patient regarding 
entering the car pumps because that is very very important and also the pump is not going to give any meal bottles that is the closed loop which is uh, remaining of the of the closed loop what is remaining is the meal bottles so you have to calculate the meal bottles and uh, uh, give it um, as we are doing in the initial version season so uh, having uh, told that actually the problem with uh, most of our uh, children like uh, maybe in the uh, even in the uh, lower socioeconomic class and all it is very difficult to teach them uh, the carb count and uh, um, sometimes they eat fancy foods and they don't know how much carb is there and when they are eating one dosha from the house the carb count is different from the hotel it is different from the school canteen is different so uh, one uh, major problem or one major hindrance to um, getting the normal sugars or getting the control properly is actually the entering the carb count so this study which uh, dr vinay has also showed tells us about uh, fixed meal estimation that is what we are most of us are using it because when we are using the uh, multiple daily dose injections and uh, uh, this uh, blood glucose estimation using the glucometer what we do is the same the fixed uh, meal thing we tell them it is uh, when we are uh, um, eating one more dosha you give one more uh, unit of insulin something like that we teach them so the same thing can be used in this pump without uh, much problem in the car that is something uh, very much correct because uh, what we are seeing here is like uh, uh, there is not much difference that is there is a significant decrease in hemoglobin a1c uh, when uh, someone is doing a proper carb counting and uh, using the pump and also when someone is just announcing the meal like it is a major meal or a short meal like the three targets they are doing and uh, still we are getting a better outcome so this is actually uh, encouraging for uh, our children also so during the follow up from the caring data we get a lot of information and we need to look at it so uh, like um, um, what dr vinay was explaining so there are multiple things happen like there is always an auto basal which is on then uh, as the even if someone misses a, um, a meal bolus the um, the what happens is there can be boluses the extra boluses or correction boluses which can be delivered by the pump uh, along with increase in the basal secretion so all those actually boils down to bringing the tar to the recommended ranges that is somewhere near 70% or more than 70% so that is very encouraging and whenever you uh, review these patients during follow up you have to tell them what to be done with uh, each of the findings in the caring plan like when the time in range is low what should we do time in range is low means there is some problem it can be either high or uh, low the the, the uh, if the excursion is like uh, towards hyperglycemia that means there can be the bolus timing is uh, poor that is so you have to assess the timing of the bolus so how much time uh, before uh, taking the meal you are giving the bolus so that actually affects the because there can be a um, shooting of the sugars while the child is eating if the bolus is given too late so you have to give the bolus a little early like that the carb there can be some problem with the carb ratio the insulin carb ratio sometimes we have we may have to change the um, insulin carb ratio and like that when someone is uh, having hypoglycemia the same adjustment should be that so it is like uh, uh, why it told you like like uh, the everything will be done by the pump and we are approaching the close loop still doctors have a lot to do it is not like uh, we are going to say goodbye to the patient and ask them to um, uh, go with the pump and uh, never come come back after it's not like that so you have to review the uh, patient again and again and uh, you can fine tune the algorithm because the algorithm actually learns from the patient like how the for the patient is eating how the patient is exercising 
what are the meal timings from that the algorithm actually fine tunes itself so the, our help like adjusting the bonuses adjusting the time adjusting the carb ratio everything will help so all these things are important and especially uh, for a, uh, like uh, uh, people like me who are taking care of small children it is very important to avoid hypoglycemia during sleep because one major hindrance for control in children is mothers are very much worried about giving doses during night so if you are telling that there is a pump which will actually alter the um, uh, the delivery of the insulin uh, by um, looking at uh, whether the, there whether there is a chance of going for hypoglycemia it is not even a suspect it's not even a suspect it's like they are adjusting it very early then they will be very much relieved so that is the importance of uh, this sort of pump and uh, manual mode in between i told you we start with the manual mode then convert it to the smart car and after some time we have to change the manual mode again and we should copy what is there in the smart guard mode to the manual mode so that it is more suited to the patient and uh, uh, actually the uh, we should tell them the closed loop is yet to come and uh, the boluses should be given by the patient and also the carb counts if we can have that will be better so these are the messages which we should tell them and um, i think this will change the um, management of diabetes uh, in uh, even in pediatrics in our country because while we read the spad um, ambulatory care of um, uh, diabetes there is a uh, all the societies the nice the spad uh, everyone tells our target is 7.5 and there is a footnote that the registries in us and uk and germany everywhere the control achieved is only in 22% 19% like that so that is that is something should change so i think uh, we can change diabetes but the cost also should come down thank you